Okay, so we're going to look at this paper as an example. If you do a quick search on Google, you can find a number of uh, examples of good or bad uh, IAs out there to get an idea of what you should and shouldn't be doing. We're going to look at an example of a good IA. This is one that was scored a 7. And um, we'll go through other elements of this as we go into other parts of the paper. Our focus right now is going to be Section 1, our identification and evaluation of sources. First thing you should notice as you look at this example, Section 1 is not long. All right? Now, if this was double-spaced, um, this might come out to be, you know, maybe two pages. But again, if we go back to the rubric, to the guide and the recommendations, right, section one, they're suggesting 500 words. That's not that long. So this should not be something that's taking you, um, you know, weeks to complete. So section one, I like this example because this person also writes straight to the point and straight to the rubric. And there's, especially on section one, there's no points for, for fancy writing here, right? Uh, to ensure that everybody is being graded um, fairly, uh, no matter what school you're at, where you are in the world, the, the IB examiners have to follow a rubric and things are also separated pretty well into uh, content areas. So on your history IA, you're not going to be um, graded on things like grammar and um, you know spelling and these kind of things. Now you want to make that as good as possible, obviously. Uh, you know, if it's if it's got errors all over the place, it's going to hurt the quality of your paper, and it's one of those you know uh, things that can affect the ability to read the paper, to make sense of it, and that can hurt your grade. So you still want to use best writing practices as you go through, through this thing. So let's jump to our rubric and look and see what are we being graded on and is that person doing it? So again, the first thing, which the last video explained that you're gonna be graded on in this is an appropriate question for investigation has been clearly stated. So key elements here, first of all, appropriate question, which if you've already done your draft of section two and had that approved, you should have an appropriate question or I will have given you feedback that you need to narrow down the scope of your question or alter it in some way. And it's been clearly stated. So the first thing this person does in section one is exactly that. This investigation will focus on the question, to what extent was the British army responsible for Bloody Sunday in January, 1972? Boom, very first thing, put the question there, check that box off, get those points, and move right along. Um, right, this person gives a little bit more information here on the specifics of what this is going into, right? But they're not spending a ton of time on it. Um, just, just enough to, to give the person who's grading this an understanding of what they're gonna delve into. So second paragraph here, let's jump into what we're being graded on. Student has identified and selected appropriate and relevant sources, which you guys should have because we had the first thing you guys had to do is find sources of information and find good ones. And there's a clear explanation of the relevance of these sources to the investigation. So this person has good sources, National Archives, which I, some people actually have sources from that. Um, right, other good sources, things that you probably want to use for section one is if you have things from sources such as uh, Library of Congress, uh, other uh, JSTOR, um, any kind of academic journal, books, like you want to use high quality sources for your section one. Um, so this is National Archives document, A Bloody Sunday Inquiry, volume two, chapter 19, uh, published by the British government in 2010. The reason this person is giving this long description here is to give as much information about this document as possible to ensure that it is clear this is relevant, right? Explain. Don't just say source one is relevant because what is the source? You have to explain to the person grading it what the source is. They don't know. So give the title, the author, the date, 